Okay, everybody, welcome to the regular council meeting of the City Cross Lake. It's Monday, April 8th at 7 o'clock, and let's stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Already first on the agenda is additions, approval of additions to the agenda, and we have additional bills. We've got a League of Minnesota annual conference information and month end revenue and month end expenditure report. So I need a motion to approve them. I move to approve the additions. Second. Okay, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carries. Next public forum, action may or may not be taken. Uh, speaker must state their name, address. I'm gonna condense that long five line thing. Does anybody have anything for public forum tonight? Peter, come on up. Peter Graves, 14131 Sugarloaf Road. I just wanted to give the council a summary or an update on the April Foolish Day Tournament. For our third annual Foolish Day Tournament, we actually played for the first time outdoors. All right. And because of the wind, the players told me that it was very foolish at times. <laughs> um, but it was our most successful um, tournament so far in terms of participation and fundraising. The community really stepped up, uh, both the businesses and residents and we raised $3,000 to give off to the charity. So each charity will get $1,000. Let's see if I can remember the three that won. Um, the Christmas for Kids was one winner. Um, the Community School was another winner. And uh, the Food Shelf was the third winner. So. Once we get all the dollars collected and in, we'll be cutting checks and presenting that to those three women awesome. charities. Yeah, Thank you, Peter. Yeah, Thank good you. Job. Oh, yep. Anybody else? Not seeing anybody, we'll close public forum. Consent calendar next. All items here listed are considered to be routine by the city council and will be acted on by one motion. No separate discussion unless somebody, citizen or council member requests. Everybody looked at it? Okay. Okay, motion to approve. I'll move that you uh, approve it as submitted. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next, the mayor and council members report. Jackson's first up. Council, this is on behalf of Cindy Mugato that she cannot be here tonight, but she says thank you. Thank you to the mayor, city council members, police, fire, EMS, and all public works, and the public works department for working with the chamber and the community to host the annual St. Patrick's Day Parade and celebration in Cross Lake. The 50th annual was amazing and the largest ever with over 130 businesses and organizations in the parade this year. We pace, or the pace was almost perfect and the majority of the parade finished their route within about an hour. We did hit a few snags when spectator vehicles began to get in the lineup and we can correlate that to the lack of snow as the number of cars parked along the snow, snowless route made for an easy access in. We are already meeting to discuss ways to prevent this from happening in the future. Cindy was able to meet with the child involved in the mishap. She was back in school and very thankful to the first responders who calmed her down during that very scary experience. Thousands of spectators made up of residents, seasonal residents, and visitors thoroughly enjoyed the weekend's festivities as your departments in the business community rolled out the green carpet to welcome them into town. Many businesses can remain open for the 12 months because of the off-season events hosted in Cross Lake, most specifically this March St. Patrick's Day celebration. Thank you to all. We appreciate the partnership to host one of the Crow Wing County's largest tourism events and unquestionably the best St. Patrick's Day parade in the state. And so on behalf of the chamber, they have an award for Jake, Pat, and Chip for helping out with the parade. Oh, so I... Oh. So 
So it's also been requested that the three of you hold this for a picture real quick. <laughs> they have to share it. Yes. You can rotate it. <laughs> <laughs> you want to stand up there, wherever you want to go, this is fine. Get Marsha in there. Get Marsha. <laughs> Well done, Jackson. Next, we've got a thank you letter from Sue Schaefer, and it is addressed, Dear TJ. So, TJ, can I throw you under the bus for that one? <laughs> You want me to read it quick? Here, you want this one? Oh, it's there you go. I'm reading a letter to myself, but <laughs> you want to take it, Jackson? It's sure, I'll take it. Have you read it? Dear TJ, this letter is to let you know how thankful I am that you have the Silver Sneakers program available to the seniors in the Cross Lake area and surrounding cities and towns. It is not just the program, it is who teaches it and makes it such a wonderful program. We've lived up here full time for 12 years, or sorry, we moved up here full time 12 years ago, and I just became acquainted with your program when Donna Kiefer came to the Immaculate Heart Church Women's Group to introduce us all to the program that it is available to us all. I have participated in many programs over the years, from jazzercise programs and the lifetime fitness classes in Maple Grove, to the Hallett Center in Crosby, Bone Builders in Outing, women's low impact classes in Emily, and just this past two winners classes at the YMCA in St. Augustine, Florida, three times a week. The program your park and recreation offers headed by Donna is the top of my list, as Donna is really something. She has it all combining all the others I have attended. She truly cares about the individuals at her classes and incorporates so many different opportunities for people in their wellness of their life. Her knowledge is unsurpassed from what I have experienced with other instructors, and I believe she is one of the greatest assets of your community. Thank you for offering this program as well, as we know there are other programs, then there are programs, and this is one of the best that I have attended. Donna, I believe, is the reason why. Sincerely, Sue Schaefer, outing. Okay, next we have a resolution accepting donations. We have got a donation from the Cross Lake Ideal Lions for $6,000. And I'm not sure what this is, Chip, but it's a 24-foot slide-in unit for the fire, fire Department Command Vehicle. Next we have one from the Pell Foundation for $841 for pic pickleball table, picnic tables. And one from Cheryl Tollefson for $100 for ARP tax help donation. So we need a motion to accept them. I'll make a motion that we accept the donations from the Cross Lake Lions at 6,000, Pell Foundation at 841, and Cheryl Tollefson, $100. Second. Okay, a motion to second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Bray, are you gonna come up for this? We got a report from Tim Bray on the roundabout, I guess. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor and Council, thank you for having me again. Uh, I do have a quick update um, on the progress of the plans and approval. So last month when I stood before you, there was a lot of concern shared with me about where we were at in the uh, process of getting the federal review, the state review. And I can tell you I went, uh, got right to work, kind of hoping to get some uh, favors and things like that to get it approved and I can stand before you today and say that it's it's finally got to its last step It included finishing the plans and the plans review the environmental documentation at a federal level which is very robust and then uh, the right-of-way we were able to secure the right-of-way and get the right-of-way certificate that's needed so all of those things and others came together to be able to get it to the FHWA, so it's left the state review, the federal review by the federal folks that represent 
uh, that are actually state employees. So it should be on the FHWA person's desk today or shortly uh, for that final approval. And um, I don't know how long that takes. I have no control over that. I can't call in a favor to the federal government, unfortunately. But I can tell you it came a long way really quickly over the last month. And um, I'm happy to report that we're still on track for uh, uh, June 1st or the first week of June start. We're shooting for that. We cannot advertise it for bids until the, the federal government uh, approves it to somebody at the FHWA. The good thing is there's been a lot of checks and balances along the way and it should be a formality for this person to sign it. There's been a lot of hard work by a lot of talented people to get it there. So it's just a matter of getting to the top of this person's pile and hopefully getting it signed off. Once we do that, we can uh, advertise and we're gonna advertise for three weeks and then we will open the bid um, and then have the county board um, accept the lower bid or the, the bid that comes in. And then another federal process kicks in. Um, there's some disadvantaged business enterprise goals because it's federal money. There's a lot of checks and balances that everybody gets you know, their fair share at it. And there's a requirement that these contractors do their best to employ or utilize disadvantaged businesses. And so there'll be a percentage goal assigned to this project and the contractor has some time to put that together. And that could take about three weeks. That's how we end up you know, into June. So that's currently the update I have. The, the plans are completely done and reviewed. The environmental documents completely done, reviewed, and signed, and the right-of-way has been purchased and checks mailed and our certificate. So all your guys' stuff is done? All our stuff when is done. When you get the word, you can put it right out. Right. Is there any chance that you might actually be, be able to begin before June, if everything moves along as quickly as this previous step did? <laughs> well, <laughs> I guess I'm not, uh, you know, I don't know. It is a complex project, and so even when the contractor uh, gets it and they have to put together this disadvantaged business um, goal, that might take a little longer. This is one of the most complex federal ones I've been involved with in a very long time, so um, I'm just going to say June 1st. Well, obviously, we'd like to start as soon as we can because we're... We're concerned about it taking into the fall and into the winter. Um, there, there are other concerns uh, from uh, the community, but we're also concerned about going over two years too. And so we just heard about how wonderful the uh, parade was. And I can, Im I can imagine a bad scenario where we're not done and people are having to deal with that during that time which is such important so important across lake so it's important to get it finished so are, are uh, contractors aware uh, um, of this disadvantaged goals that they have to put in contracts so they could possibly boilerplate and it wouldn't be so time consuming for them they are aware and i can tell you that i did have one contractor ask me what the goal is and unfortunately we don't don't know what it is if you're working with federal money and you're a contractor that does this kind of work at this scale you probably utilize federal money and uh, you're very familiar with disadvantaged uh, business enterprise goals who decides on the goal um the, go the federal government i think i mean do they government. tell them excuse me do do does the federal government dictate what the goal is uh, yes so it'll, that's part of the rev that's part of the review and they'll determine what that is I looked at one today it was six percent of the contract so it that could be one contractor that does the concrete it could be somebody that does the paving um, it's up to them to to find those contractors and believe me they're they're available and they know who they you know they know who they are so it's nothing new. All right, Tim. Any other questions wait. about that? No. Did I have anything else on here? Yeah, uh, concrete. Uh, the concrete. I think Phil is going to talk about Oh. oh. <laughs> well, okay. I, I'm good at impromptu. But. 
Okay. Do I have another thing on here too? Oh, well, it was that letter from the cross okay. I don't know if that wanted yeah. to be Do you mind if we go to that, Mr. Mayor, for, as long as I'm up here and then Phil can bring us home? Go to the letter from the cross Lakers? Yes. Sure. All right, who wants to read that? Mm. I don't know, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I attended the cross Lakers meeting. It was last Monday, a week from uh, a week ago today and um, uh, provided a project update much like I just did. And I also talked about some of the other concerns that we've talked about, the phasing and, and things like that. And, they felt, and the group felt, and I think there is a, some Cross Lakers um, present too that can speak to this. They just wanted to put their concerns in writing so we were well aware of it. And I did commit to showing this to the contractor. I think there was some concern that you know, they might not know this town and how important tourism is and having the road open and the timing of the phases and things like that. So I think, I think it was a good idea to put it in writing uh, from the Cross Lakers. So it's not from the council, but, I'm, but uh, I believe Sandy, were you there that day? Yeah. And um, so council representative was there. And that's I think out of respect to the Cross Lakers, we should read it. Okay. And, and let the people hear it. Okay. You want to read so, it, Dave? Yeah, I'll read it. This letter is in regard to the 2024 phase one and phase two of the County Road 3 and 66 road construction project through downtown Cross Lake. The Cross Lakers, a volunteer membership of residents with the mission to responsibly grow the community, wish to again express our support for efforts made by Crow Wing County and the city of Cross Lake to minimize disruption to the businesses, residents, and visitors in our area during the construction. It is our understanding that the project has been broken down into two phases and commitments have been made to keep access to businesses during construction and efforts to support the local economy. We are also aware of incentives that have been factored in to help shorten the duration of the project. We recognize and applaud those efforts and would like to outline a number of other opportunities that the county and city should consider implementing to further that goal. One is to modify road construction signs to highlight that businesses are open rather than road close detour. Cons consider construction work ahead, alternative bypass this way. So, second one is develop requirements in the contract that permit maximum access during critical summer weekends. For example, 4th of July weekend and cross lake days. Number three, allow for a break in the construction project between phase one and phase two to allow for a normal traffic flow during the critical busy midsummer period. In addition to allowing stop and go one way traffic to flow through town during phase two of the project, if and when traffic must be completely stopped, arrange in the contract that that work be done midweek or during the evening hours. Implementation of these types of efforts will help demonstrate to the residents and businesses that the county and the city are engaged in efforts to make this a successful project. Sign the Cross Lakers. So, thank you, Cross Lakers, for your input and your thoughts. Um, just, just quickly to address that, we are working on a lot of those things. I had some conversations about some signage. Should we gotten some suggestions from uh, Cindy Mugato with specific roadway signage language that uh, avoids the road closed language and being more welcoming to uh, patrons to the businesses that that may be impacted by this so we're working out those details trying to find a concise way to say all the things that need to be said. And uh, we, right. we were talking about some things today. And one of the only things that we're, we're not considering is what I would consider the all stop between the two phases. Um, as I mentioned before, an all stop of one, two weeks, one month, really puts that freeze up in play to get this finished. So I think there's going to be a natural break anyway. If we stop after, or pardon me, if we don't start till June, it's going to be maybe into August, like the second week of August, till we get to the phase two portion. And then, you know, it's after Labor Day that 
this town slows down and there's less of a concern about that. We're just not considering an all stop. Uh, I think that wouldn't be fair to the contractor to build that in and um, things like we need to keep going and get this done. And I, I know that's difficult. We honestly don't know if they could do it faster or, yeah. and we're hoping that they'll have some ideas maybe how to do it faster, right. maybe even phase a little different, but. Mm -hmm. You're building in incentives, correct? We are building in incentives. We're still, we're gonna meet internally and try to figure that out and how the special provision lays that out. And um, so I think we've talking about just about the completion, you know, the completion of phase one, you get so much money, and the completion of phase two, you get this much money. But the reality is, it's not when it's, phase two is the important part is not when it's all complete, all the sidewalks, all the grass is planted, all that stuff. It's when traffic can get on it and, you know, in two lanes through town. There's work that can be done outside of that that we can do. And we want to make sure we get the traffic back on there. And that's what the incentive is for, not necessarily for the, you know, seating and things like that. So we're going to talk about that and, and how to best do that. We're also going to try to build into the special provisions that we want to hear the contractor's ideas. And so we put together a two-phase plan based on what we know about the local contractors and their capability and the amount of people they have and stuff. What we might attract with incentives and the scale of this, we might attract uh, companies that we've never seen before with much more capacity. And we won't, don't want to lock them into two phases, an eight week and a six week phase, when they could possibly deliver it much faster. And so we want to be open uh, to that. We really need a contractor on board to continue our work with them to minimize the impacts and things like that. Okay. Yep. Um, I have, if, if I may, I have a quick, TJ, if you'll show this up, I'll show for those put together some, trying to put together some simple drawings that we can utilize on social media and, uh, and the Corps of Engineers can email this out to their email blast, <clears throat> things like that, to show what these phases are. So it's really hard to see the colors here, but um, phase one construction is, and I'll have a blow up of this, phase one is in this area. And the detour for phase one utilizes 37. Think of the intersection at 336 and 103. We're going to make that an all-way stop. So all directions stop. And so this community is going to get to see what a four-way stop works like. And works. There you go. That's good. Um, so this is going to be phase one construction. Is that orange right there? This section is the temporary entrance to the campground. You may have noticed the big tree that got cut down um, leading to the parking lot off of County Road uh, 3 there. That's where that entrance is going to come in. Here's a little better kind of a blow up of what that looks like. So you'll be able to get across the bridge to get to the Corps of Engineer campground and then also um, the historic village. We want to provide a, an entrance for them too um, to make sure I know that they're planning a lot of events this year. Okay? So the detour or the alternate route would stop here and then you can pick up on 66 and go north. So really the phase one is not as impactful to these businesses. And in these businesses you can see that they'll be able to get to that entrance at Angie's and still utilize this. We're actually planning to do a little bit of this under traffic so they can come from this way as well. Okay, here's, here's phase two in the construction area. The construction area is this orange piece, so it's uh, the portion of three from that Andes entrance all the way up to the, the 37 intersection. And then also Swan Drive in front of the school and all the way up to Bald Eagle. 
And this is the proposed uh, detour. It is a long one. That's the official detour. <clears throat> it was the same official detour that was used for the sanitary sewer project. Of course, other people found other ways to get around. We just can't promote that. I mean, here's just another blow up of that. You can see that the uh, at that time, the temporary entrance is removed and you get in the normal access utilizing the roundabout. So the roundabout will be open after, after phase one is complete. And all that, that Andy, um, Andes and Holiday Block will be open up to Swan Bay. But Tim, for the most part, you know, between, I mean, up to Bald Eagle, between <coughs> Swan and Bald Eagle, it won't be, I mean, there will be some traffic at times allowed. Yes, it okay. has to. Um, okay. Think about the post office. There are people that get their medicine at the post office and rely on that. We can't shut that up. And, and just as important to other businesses mm -hmm. to have business traffic through there. It might be flaggers. It might um, be difficult. It might be gravel for a time, but we're going to try to get. Well, we are going to get traffic through there. It's just not going to be what it is. It's going to. It's going to have an impact, and the people are going to come and treat it like it's not closed and stuff like that. We're going to. It's going to be challenging, but we recognize how important that is. People, the church, and things like that. It can't be shut off completely. But it will be difficult. I think one of the suggestions from Cindy uh, Mugato was have a sign basically inviting traffic, but it, to have them expect delays. So say that the businesses are open, expect delays. Or, so they kind of go in knowing that there might be some problems. We have to do pipe work at some point, and the road will be completely closed. We want to limit that and then make sure it's buttoned up, at least at night and those kind of things. So. How deep are you going? Uh, storm sewers, tip, I don't know, six to eight feet, I think. There's other, okay. it might be deeper than that in some areas. It's, not, it's nothing like the sanitary sewer up, up, north. up north where it was 20 okay. feet down in the trench, a yeah. safe trench had to go so far out, it went from curb to curb. Yeah. This is much more isolated okay. and it won't be as impactful. And also sanitary sewer, you have to do a lot of testing and things like that before you can bury it forever. Sanitary sewer, or pardon me, storm sewer does not have that. It's much easier to do. And in some sections, they'll be able to do it in just a few hours. So. Okay. Thank you. Um, and here is, Sam, any questions on this one? I'm prepping these for release so they can be utilized. Looks like you got one in the back. Or a question in the back, sorry. Yeah, you got to come up and tell us who you are, but but let's take a couple of questions. We need your name and address, Roy. Just everybody, anybody who wants to come up and talk. For the record, so. Roy Lanners. 33084 Big Pine Drive. When is the completion date of this so called project that uh, you're dreaming because of all the different problems you might run into? Mm -hmm. uh, it's, so, so, phase one, we're hoping uh, mid August at the latest, and then into September before uh, phase two is complete. The other question, I heard rumor that besides this roundabout we're talking about, you're putting one in on 36 and 37 during the same time period. No, not sure. I don't know you, but the person who told me, I trust. That's why I'm asking. Yeah, no, I'm telling you, it's not true. <clears throat> 36 and 37. Oh, yeah. Yes. No. <laughs> and when is the one, the next one going in on three and four? This year. This year. When is it starting? That one's out for bids right now. Bids will open bids in a couple weeks. So from Merrifield up to here, we get to 
fight two of them mm -hmm. at the same time. You got a pretty good detour on that three and four, don't you? You're going to have uh, a, actually. We're I doing, haven't heard of it yet. Yeah. We uh, on that one down there, we're utilizing a bypass for Counter Road Three traffic. <laughs> so if oh, you not to go back, up to four though. If you huh? recall, down at three and eleven, we had that yeah, bypass right. that goes right by the construction site. You can Perfect. see everything, and you'll be able to go north and southbound. So the folks at Breezy Point won't have a quite so good, but we'll have a pretty good road here. There will here. be a section of Counter Road Four that is won't be able to get through the construction site. Yeah. So you have to uh, utilize County Road 118. Of course, that's, that's the official detour. There are other ways that people will find it. Well, thank you, Tim. Yeah, there's, um, I believe there's now some more information on our website about the detour for that. And I don't have a computer, that's why I came to ask. If you stop by my office, I'll give you. A computer? Not a computer. <laughs> I'm going to. <laughs> I'm not trying to get in trouble. I'm asking. Yeah, well, I'll be happy to, if you want to come by my office, we'll give you. That's what I heard him say. I don't know routes for that one. Well, it'd be kind of nice, but. Sure. It's, it's Thanks, nice. Roy. Roy, call any one of us, too. I mean, we'll, I don't know what we know, but we'll try to it's keep you in the number. loop. Yeah, you Jackson. got Jackson on speed dial, I'm got sure. Jackson phone number. And I asked politely. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Thanks. Joe Slack, 13164 East Shore Road, Cross Lake, and we have the restaurant right in the heart of your project there. We're, a little, we're more than a little concerned about how the summer will go. Uh, you talked about an all-stop, and that Cross Lake will get to experience an all-stop corner. Is there, I mean, I don't need to experience to realize it's going to be another big negative for coming through town, even if it's detoured, is there's no way to do temporary lights. I've seen it in other communities in a, in a situation where they're just, at least the more common road has a green light but a little longer, maybe traffic flows a little better, mm -hmm. and you don't see any advantage to that? You, uh, we're talking about one, 103, 3, and 36. Right, and that all stop. Yeah, all stop. I mean, I, I see that on Friday and Saturday and Sunday as being a nightmare, one car at a time. And a, and a, a light that's sending the more common direction of traffic a little longer with a green light, even though they're just temporary. They park them out there. I've seen it before. That doesn't seem to be a better answer. Uh, we haven't considered it yet. We've, we've okay. I just, I'm just i trying to figure out the smoothest way to get through yeah. this, yeah. trying to sell a cheeseburger. That's what we do. All right. Well, Thank I, you. I, I mean, I'll talk about it with my staff. Okay. I just, that it's, all it's never corner is going to be a nightmare on the big weekend. Thank you. Um, I think that's all. That's why you get paid the big bucks, Jim. Yeah, no, hey, these are great. I mean, uh, yeah. it, it kind of seems like a controversial, but I'll, I'm going to take the idea back. Yeah. And I'm going to meet with right. Roy if he wants to and stuff like that. So it's no, I mean, this is what I do. I have appreciate no problem. It. It's all good. We appreciate you. That. Thanks, Tim. Okay. That's okay. That's coming. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I provided, at the last PMT meeting, um, we recognized we need to get color picked out for the median and the truck apron. The median um, is the legs coming up to the roundabout, mm -hmm. and the truck apron is actually the center concrete that's around the center vegetation. Uh, the mayor said only bring two, but I didn't listen to him, and I brought you four. So... Do you have any interest in any of those colors so we can put it in the plans for specifying a color? Well, I was just, I've been informed that it's preferable to have a color. It's what I understand, but I've seen roundabouts with and without. My, in, in our county, you can see them, you can see them in Brainerd. Brainerd has picked out the salmon color um, but then if you go anywhere else, uh, Crow Wing County doesn't typically put color mm -hmm. on their, on theirs. The city of Baxter had, uh, did one recently. They didn't put one color on theirs. Um, I don't think those have as much pedestrian opportunity. 
in, in those locations. So do you think having the color is in any way a safety factor for pedestrian traffic? Um, so the sidewalks will be just concrete color uh, plain. The medians being a different color are contrasting and not necessarily a place to walk. So Phil, let me interrupt you for a second. would be a subtle. The, on the Andes corner where those four or five spots are, yes. you've got a little green, uh, green color there. Is that vegetation? So what we have is in front of those four parking spots, there's a strip of um, vegetation. And that is going to be dirt, supposedly grass. something growing. Grass. grass. But I mean something but, growing. But what happens is you get around that area and you get kind of more towards, you're heading towards uh, Holiday and Pine Peaks and it narrows so much you can't have a vegetative strip so then we put some color in there. You can see it right past the crosswalk. Mm -hmm. Do you see that on there? Mm -hmm. Just past the crosswalk. It's so tight we put a little bit of colored concrete in there. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Otherwise, it's, this is the medians and then this is the truck apron. This would we would have larger vehicles would travel up onto to make that. Um, and again, all of the crossings are just plain concrete. Uh, the question was asked to me ahead of time, what are we talking about cost additive? Uh, if you remember, we talked about hardscape or a vegetated boulevard the whole way. We went with vegetated boulevard, but was directed to keep the color in the rest of it. So for the truck apron, which is a thickened pavement, seven inches of concrete, that is 3,300 square feet. It's about $5 a square foot extra for the color. Um, so that adds $16,500, we estimate. And then the medians mm -hmm. are 3,700 square feet. So they add 18,500. So together, it's about $35,000 in color that we think you add compared to leaving it plain. And that's all incurred by the city. That's yes, the city's that dollars. The county will pay for the concrete. The city's paying for the color that's in yeah. there. Well, it's always been there. I'd say that was always yeah. already there, right? Yeah, so this, I don't, this is an added I cost. You would be agreeing to pay more than... Guys, it's in the budget we talk about before, right. but it's more than just... I think it would be a good idea to make a different color from the drive lanes just so it stands out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the drive lanes are going to be black asphalt. Correct. So maybe the white concrete is fine. I don't know. I think it is. It's in. It, it fades. It fades. So it will, like it will fade. It, um, it fades. You can go to, if, if you have your phone, you can go and you can pop open an aerial photo of Brainerd. You could go look at Essentia Health Center over by the DMV and you can see that one. That's about three or four years old, we figured, right? Three or four years old. You can go to uh, Brainerd High School, kind of college drive. There's three or four roundabouts in there that were done, I think, around 2015 um, or even earlier. Brainerd does a salmon color, so you'll see a very, their, their pattern is the medians coming in and the truck apron are a salmon, it's and you can see how they've weathered over time. They, they fade. The grass. How soon do you need a decision? Um, sooner than later. I mean, we, it's, it's sitting in the Fed's hands. and. Well, does anyone have a strong opinion? Go with concrete. And I feel like these the colors page. are... Okay. Marsha and I are on the same page. Yeah. Holy buckets. Call the I newspaper. Know. <laughs> Call the newspaper. No, I, just, <laughs> I just don't want to make it a, a mistake, aesthetically speaking, and then regret it, you know, because once it's done, it's done. So... Uh, well, I mean, look at the... Look at how bad this one faded already in front of College Drive. It's the color of dead grass. <laughs> I'm thinking you're not going to regret it because 
you're not going to ever see it colored anyway. So it's a good contrast between the asphalt and the, you know, yeah, I, the walk lanes. I think just go with the concrete. No color. No color. Are you color? Huh? Sandy. Oh. I mean. Sure. I was leaning towards the gray just because I thought if it fades, it, it'll just, you know, yeah. it won't look as bad. Right. It'll be the same as yeah. not doing it. I mean, if we can save $35,000 and nobody has a strong opinion, you know, I guess. Dave, where are you? I don't have an opinion. I don't. Yeah. If that's the case, then I'll make a motion. We go with gray or concrete. No color, right? Correct. I'll second Aaron's motion to not put color in. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Great it is. Right. Concrete it is. Thank you. And then we could take the 35 grand and plant more plants, right? No. Get back up here. <laughs> no. <laughs> all right. Okay. I'm proud of that. All right. That. What's next? The ordinance amendment. Who's going to take that? That was Aaron and I. We had kind of talked about that. We wanted to bring it forward. Just to see, I had, or I reached out to our new city attorney. Let me find the email. And I had just asked him if it was, what was going on regarding the public right of ways if we truly needed to, by law, have hearings on them and allow people to uh, request, request vacation of a property that's next to them. He said that's not the case, and he said it can be easily put back into the code if the council so wishes. It is not a zoning ordinance, so a public hearing is not required unless the city has a policy or the ordinance that requires all ordinances or amendments to have public hearings. So I just think, you know, based on public right-of-ways, if it's in the city's interest to get or to give away public, our own public land that was in deeds years ago for the city, I feel like it should be a, a city's jurisdiction to get rid of them on our own versus people just wanting that extra lot. So based on what I read in here, Jackson, mm -hmm. the city can still, if they find that the maintenance of a, of a right of way is not worth, you know, is, Correct. Is, is not worth the value of the land or its use to the land, then we can put them up for vacation. Correct. The but, city can but decide. People can't keep applying for vacation. Right, no more $1,000 applications. Okay. They, okay. they can, as long as they do not lead to the water. Oh, right. It's yes. just the ones that lead, lead to, to the, the water. water. Okay. TJ, what's your opinion of that? You put a lot of time in those. <coughs> yeah, we're certainly not uh, eliminating, I'm just doing stuff for video here. We're not eliminating um, the right for the public to come in and talk to city officials and, and give us their opinion and then we can take it and bring it in front of you or sit down in the office and go through the process. We're not eliminating that stuff. We're just going back to what we once had and I think it was a lot easier mm -hmm. um, process. So that's kind of well, my What we once piece. had, we never gave them up, did we? I don't think we ever vacated them. Very reluctant. I think there was a couple that, when I first got on board, I think there was one that we looked at that we did. I could be mistaken. Without but having somebody petition for it, we just came forward and said we want to. No, get I think there was a petition. But I'm I'm on the I'm on the side of the fence that we just go back to what we once had, but still leave it open for the public to come and talk to city officials. In the case where it really doesn't make sense, we can go through the process, we can go out there, look at it, we can address the subject on a time-by-time -time basis. You did an inventory of them at one time, and you came back with an opinion that 60% of them we should keep, 30% of them have got, or don't quote me on that, but some, have got no value to the city. We've identified the ones that are readily available for use and that don't need a lot of work to be done to use them to get down to the water. The other ones, we didn't necessarily say that we would like to get rid of them. We're just not at that point where we want to go through all the maintenance and the, all the costs to develop them and make them usable, if that makes sense. Yeah. It does. I mean, there's a policing policy. We've got to keep yeah. an eye on them, kick people off when they use them, whatever. So. Right. I guess I, I question the fact that that's where we were, and then we were told by the attorney 
that uh, we have to give the people the right to petition for vacates. And now we're back to, um, is Jordan on there, our, our city attorney? Uh, so I'm, I'm thinking that um, what is the reason that we were told that we have to give all, citizen, all, all residents the opportunity to petition? And I don't think we've approved maybe one, that was, two, maybe, I don't know. That was uh, under Brad, though. I don't I'm think just, Jordan. I, I know that, but we have one attorney that said, or we have an attorney that says we have to allow people to uh, petition for vacate. And now we have Jordan, so take it away, Jordan. <laughs> yes, I, I cannot speak to the prior legal advice that was given by um, former counsel. I know that this is something Joe looked into. I saw the email back in response. So, um, I mean, that's, that's the position. I don't know if something changed since then or, or what the basis of the prior um, guidance was. But um, as Joe said, that's, that's kind of where um, our guidance is, that it can be included or re-included as it was previously. And I, rec I just got to throw something in here, Marcia, because I recall that previous to us starting to vacate them, we were told that we cannot vacate them under any circumstances. I think, I think our ordinance said that we couldn't, and then we were informed by the attorney that we can't do that, and then we opened it up, then there was inventories. Um, I'm positive that that's what occurred. Um, the ordinance said we wouldn't take applications for them. Okay. We I, I could not sell them. Right. Right. For That's sure. against the law, that right. we all know. But. but our former attorneys, up until Brad, all said we could have that in our ordinance. Up until Brad. Brad said we had to take it out, and Joe said we could put it back in. He said that... It, I just don't want to get down the road and then, okay, now we have to put it back in. I want to, I want to make sure that what we do is what the law allows us to do. And if, and if the law says that we have to give the citizens a right to petition, to vacate, then that's what we should be doing. And if the law does not state that, then I'm all for uh, not allowing people to petition to vacate the public access. Marsha, I, I remember Brad talking about it. And... and um, how do I gently say this? Remember that Brad was on both ends of the stick on this thing. He was processing the vacations and getting paid extra. That wasn't very gentle, Aaron. I know. <laughs> I'm I just. Couldn't, I couldn't come up with something. Okay, if, if we can't rely on our attorney to give us the correct answer, then I guess we shouldn't. Brad was the anomaly, and prior to Brad, and now Jordan is telling us that we, that, that this is, you know, that this is legal, that we do it this way. I, th I think we're safe doing this, mm -hmm. okay? So. In closing, Jordan, you agree with that? We're safe doing this? Correct, yes. Okay. I make a motion that we amend the ordinance to throw in, or to throw back in the ordinance amending Chapter 42, Street Sidewalks and Right-of-Ways, and approval to publish the, pub uh, publish the summary. I second that. Okay, any other discussion on it? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries all in favor. Okay. Here we go. Discuss local ballot control for Cross Lake. And Sonia, good for you. Come on up and take over. We have made a few changes to the okay. things that I emailed you, so if you can pass them. Please. Thank you, Sonia. Appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Um, after our meeting with Deb Erickson last week, we are finally in agreement 
as to what Cross Lake's options actually are in, with regards to administering absentee ballots. We've been over all the reasons supporting moving forward with the resolution of intent you passed in December. Absentee and in-person early votes are looked at in the same way. They're all treated like absentee ballots, essentially. Between 26 and 42% of Cross Lake voters used one of those two methods since 2016 to cast their ballot. The county handles those ballots. In fact, they process 60% of the ballots countywide. By law, county employees are nonpartisan. So if they use employees to serve as election judges, they are exempt from adhering to party balance. I have told you this was unbelievable news to me when I learned of it just a few months back. Years ago, it wasn't such a big issue as many fewer voters voted absentee. There were lots of changes to Minnesota election law last year. The permanent absentee voter designation was available before, as Deb pointed out, but a person had to actively pursue that on their own and it was not widely used. It's the law now that the new automatic registration forms must offer the choice to become a permanent absentee voter. There's no question this is going to increase the rate of people voting by absentee. And people clearly like the convenience of voting early, as proven by the numbers. Citizens wishing to exercise their right will appreciate being able to cast their vote right here at City Hall. No trip to Brainerd needed. It's our hope that every eligible voter will participate in this most important process. You will be making it as convenient for everyone as possible especially for those that can't get around like they used to or don't drive. I sent all of you a detailed chart of options and related estimated expenses. Essentially, we've highlighted two options. Both offer full service for your voting customer for the full 46 days before election day. I don't know if you want me to put this up on the screen or not. Yeah, you probably could. Yeah, there you go. Option one is basically that we do not buy a tabulator machine this year. Voters may vote by absentee and use the multiple envelope method for all 46 early voting days. That is 32 working days. Option two, essentially you purchase a tabulator in 2024. Voters may vote by absentee and use the multiple envelope method until 18 days before election day when they could choose to slide their ballot into the tabulator. Once you choose option one or two, you can decide to have the county do the mailing for the absentee ballots and use the city of Cross Lake as the return address. So the ballots come here, or you can choose to have the city handle the mailing itself. That's why there are four columns on your expense sheet. The first two columns are option one, no machine this year, either Cross Lake doing the mailing or the county doing the mailing. The last two columns are option two, where we purchase the tabulator and still choose whether Cross Lake will do the mailing or the county. At the bottom of page two, the highest cost estimate includes wages for two election judges for the upcoming primary and two for the November general election. The net estimated cost in yellow includes wages, i make sure I got the right color, yep. The net estimated cost in yellow includes wages for two election judges for just the general election. And city employees would be tasked with handling any absentee early voters for the primary. I am a huge advocate, as you know, for party balance but I don't like to waste money. In fact, I have never come to any government office in my life asking for them to spend money. But the voting process I hold sacred and I will stand up for it every day of the week. That being said, for the 2016 primary, Cross Lake had three absentee voters. The 2020 primary, which was a COVID anomaly, 
um, per Deb Erickson, there were 104 of us that chose that method. And for the 2022 primary, 37 Cross Lake voters cast their ballot by absentee or early. It's hard ju to justify two election judges at a cost of $8,600 in extra wages for historically so few ballots. So our recommendation would be this. Go with option one. Don't buy a machine this year. You can budget for a tabulator in 2026. You can decide whether Cross Lake or Crow Wing County handles the application mailing. The dollar savings is minimal, uh, up to $800, but it would alleviate some staff time. Have city employees handle the historically low number of ballots expected for the primary. Use party balance judges for general elections. We have verbal commitments from a number of election judges that will volunteer to serve at no cost to the taxpayer for the general election in November. That represents at least $4,320 in labor savings off the bottom line. This plan for 2024 comes in at about $12,000 if Cross Lake does the mailing, just over $11,000 if the county continues to mail the applications. Ongoing with the laws as they are today, in 2026, we would need a tabulator. Current pricing is $10,772. The life of the machine, according to Deb Erickson, is typically 15 years. Page three of your handout. Which you haven't seen before. We just added this uh, annual thing. Um, page three shows a cost analysis that illustrates future costs per election season, which would occur every other year. Splitting the tabulator expense across its years of life, following the same recommendation for staffing as we have proposed for 2024. I'm happy to answer any questions and then would respectfully ask you to consider the resolution that we presented in February so the city can move forward. And I apologize, I didn't put a copy of that with this handout, but I think Shar has it and I emailed. Wasn't that resolution just a, a intent? Not no, you already signed an intent. Right. Now, to go forward, you need to say, I am go we are going to establish a ballot board. I haven't seen a copy of that resolution. It was in the same email that that was. Oh, okay. There were two attachments. Oh, okay. It, it, it was signed and it was sent, so it's, if we don't withdraw it, okay. it's, okay. it goes. Oh, it's right okay. here. It's yep. right here, right? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Unless it's in the back. Here. Are you going to take comments from the audience? Sure. Oh. I'll sit down. Here, here Sonia. Marcia. <coughs> Make sure the button is turned on, the green button. Kathy Ellen, 14036, County Road 36, Cross Lake. Um, I've been kind of a thorn in your side, too, for the last few months. But I have a question, too. On the two election judges, according to the election judge guide from the state of Minnesota, it says our precinct of more than 500 registered voters need at least four election judges for both the primary and for the general, this is not, you can't separate them both. I really wanted to start with, though, to let you know that every election judge, whether they're on the absentee ballot board at the county, or whether they're absentee ballot board here, or absentee ballot, or just election judge, has to say an oath, sign the oath, just like you do when you sign in to vote. The oath goes like this, I solemnly swear or affirm that I will perform the duties of election judge, sorry, bad eyes, according to law and the best of my ability, and will diligently endeavor to prevent fraud, deceit, and abuse in conducting this election. I will perform my duties in a fair and impartial manner and not attempt to create an advantage for my party or my candidate. As far as declaring party balance, you have to do that the day of the election. It doesn't matter if you're a registered Republican if we need a Democrat, you can declare you're a Democrat for that day. 
So that's your party balance. Every election judge has to receive at least two hours of training, which is good for two years. Anybody on the ballot board, head judge, city clerk, has to go with way more additional training. That needs to be paid for by you, mileage included. Same with every time the absentee ballot board meets, they need to get paid. How are you going to recruit judges for the primary? We're starting the end of June. Primary goes till August, 46 days. You had all the road construction. You had summer. No one wants to give up their summer. And as far as local control goes, elections are administered by local jurisdictions. While all jurisdictions follow the same set of election laws, tasks can be accomplished in another way. But when in doubt, we have to follow instructions provided by your local official. We all have to follow the same election laws across the state. So what do you mean we don't have local control? Council, you are facing STR administration coming up. Council elections. You have a new, hopefully, new deputy clerk, treasurer. You have a new planning and zoning, no offense, but you're new to the city. We have a new city attorney, again, no offense, but they're new to the city and how it operates. We have a new city administrator we're looking for that we won't even get until the end of June, first part of July. Road construction, and we have an overloaded work schedule for one person. And you wanna take on absentee ballot administration, spending $50,000 plus of unbudgeted costs, Please consider taking this issue up next year when you have a possible new council members and mayor. Thank you. Kathy, wait a minute. Before you go, you just said at your closing statement there that we're going to spend $50,000 a year on this. That was what was said in February. Okay, now it's gone to about eleven. Well, only for two election judges. How much of that is training? Yeah, I, I don't know. We have know. to have four. You, how many people are going to be on the election, the absentee ballot board? You still have to pay for their training. We don't even know the number of that yet. Okay. It can be but two. I mean, the 50,000 was right, to was me with, a very extremely inflated number. In, well, in I disagree. So, so it's going to be someplace in between. Either way, you are already spent $15,000. Did you budget for $15,000 for a city administrator search? Well. I'm, I'm just saying, you've already. You're already no, we spending didn't budget money. For that, but. Yeah, you're already spending unbudgeted money. And then on top of all of this, you want to take on elections too? This is somewhere we can't make mistakes. We cannot make a mistake. We okay. will get sued. I'm just, you just can't make a mistake on this. STRs, yes. This, no. Okay. So, any other questions? Thank you, Kathy. Okay, do we have to have five election judges to administer absentee ballots? I don't think that's correct. No, I, I don't think that's correct nope. either. When I, when I talked to Deb, she said three. Three? Yeah. Uh, two. She said two. Well, I mean two in addition to Char. Yeah, yeah. but Char doesn't even have to. to yeah. when, when we met with Deb, she said it was. Can I say, I have no idea. I have not been trained on absentee ballot boards. I have not been trained on absentee balloting. Mm -hmm. Char does not know, and if I don't know, I'm guessing not anybody else knows that exact answer either. Oh, well, I thought Deb... They, they, consider, they consider the early voting as absentee, and absentee uh, ballots are usually party balanced and accepted or rejected. I don't think you I was actually told, Kathy, that um, that the county would pay pays for the training. Mm -hmm. That's what I was told. Yes. We have to reimburse our judges for training. We pay the judges to go to training. I meant, I meant you, your training, that they pay for that. Well, but we have to train them whether we take it in-house or th they're going to have to be trained anyway. There is no way around that. They have to be trained. Correct. Because the general election and the primary, when they're here, they're trained. You have to take them through training anyway. It doesn't really matter 
whether it's he local controlled or county, because on the primary election day and the general election day, your judges have to be trained. Pam, come on up. <coughs> well, Mayor, City Council, at first I'd like to thank Sonia and Robin for, they have put in countless hours for their passion. They really have. Um, my concern is that while it's their passion, is it for a problem that does not exist? So if you disregard the COVID um, year, which I think we should because people didn't want to go out, we have less than 4% of our population that vote absentee or early voting. And I'd like to say that those are two different things because um, early voting, we can do the ballot, the sign the letter, initial it, write all that stuff, and that can be done very simply by the county. And it's being done efficiently and effectively by the county now. There's nothing wrong with that system for 4% of our residents who may not be present. So Pam, I hate to interrupt you, but I just have to clarify something. We were just told that 26 to 42 percent of the voting population votes absentee, and now you're saying it's four percent. I wrote down. Sonia told me in two, 2022 there was 36 for the primary election. There was, you know, so many people. So I divided that by the number of residents. Oh, so the primary is, and people just don't show up for the primary. So it's right, but that's people. still we're doing a primary year this year. That's one of the two elections that we would be staffing 46 days ahead of time for 36 people to either mail in or vote absentee. And those, in my mind, are different procedures. Absentee, you can come in and you want your ballot right there and you want to slide it into the ballot box right there. That's different than mailing it in to a specific spot. And do we mail it to Cross Lake or mail it to the county? Um, I don't know that there's something broken with mailing it into the county. And they have to have all that available anyway because it includes more than just city elections. So we're going to be duplicating services in my mind for questionable added value. Secondary to the number of people that are trained for absentee um, ballot administration. I've been and I said it before, an election judge for many cycles. And I would not look forward in the summer months or even November to driving in every day for eight to 12 hour days to make sure that if one of 26 people wanted to come in on that day, that we were available. And we would have to have that ability to be there. It, once we open that door and say we want to do it, you can't say, well, it was raining that day, or it was a good fishing day, or it was um, that person and persons. It has to be a team. There's a ballot board, so there is a team that needs to be committed to this, which is not, in my mind, required because we have a current system that works very well. So I applaud you, Sonia, for your passion. Thank you for your work, and Robin. Um, but I beg to differ with the severity and need to do this very complex and such an important, important part of our democracy as we pledge to allow every vote that should count to count. And we don't want it to go through the cracks. Thank you. Thanks, Pat. I'm just gonna express a little bit of my ignorant knowledge of this. And, and part of the reason I support this effort is because I have a fear that in five years from now, we're gonna just simply be texting our votes into somebody who knows where. And I support this because we're taking back local and we're taking some responsibility and we're doing it. I don't know all the details in between, but that's the reason I support this effort. And I'm afraid that if we don't grab a hold of it, 
we're going to lose it indefinitely. We're never going to be able to get it back because things in this world that we live in are disappearing quickly. So that, that's the reason I support this effort. Well, and I keep, uh, I keep thinking about, I keep referring back to the short-term rental issue that it was, it's too much work, the county's doing fine, why do we need to deal with it? And then ultimately we, we came to this decision that um, we want to have control of it locally. We want, we want to have a be, you know, greater say in you know, how it's run, the ordinances, et cetera. So it seems like kind of the same concept that we just want to, um, not, not that the county's doing anything wrong, there's anything wrong, I'm sure the county's doing fine with short-term rentals, but we just want to have more control. And I like the option, uh, providing an option for people who can't get to Brainerd, if they want to, if, if they want to vote early, that they have that, they have that capability. Just because there aren't that many, I still think we should perhaps give them an option. That's kind of where I stand on it. Pat? I guess I, <clears throat> I'm, oh, go ahead, Pat. Go ahead. No, nope, go ahead. Pat Netco, 36084, County Road 66, Cross Lake. Um, I agree with Dave and Sandy both with this, um, that we, it's very important and our, our right to vote is sacred in our country and we need to defend our constitution. We need to get back to taking some local control with um, many things. Um, my, my ultimate wish is that election day is a national holiday and we use paper ballots and there's no machines. That would be my vote. Hooray. Yeah. However, we have to go with what we've got. Um, I see the pros and cons here. I am in favor of this with option one and keeping the cost low. I am volunteering at this point to become an election judge and to donate my time to take some shifts during that time to be a person there. And I'll be willing to talk to Shar about that later. That's all. Thank you, Pat. You know, I go out in the community and I've asked people this last week, you know, hey, have you heard about what maybe the council's mulling over about administering their absentee ballots? Some question and some are like, great, we're doing it here in our city. I mean, I know it's gonna be a learning curve and you can't, well, it's not necessarily a learning curve. We're gonna, people are gonna be trained. Um, so you're saying the public support? The pu I, I hear public support every day. I, I got, heard it today in the bank. I got two emails today from people saying, please pass this. So, I got 10, oh. same. So, I mean, I think there's support for it and, you know, and I certainly don't want to inflict any more, you know, grief You on say that. Yeah. But I don't think, I don't see it. I don't, I don't understand how you guys can even think about taking this on today. I am so disappointed. Last December, when you guys came to the council and brought this up, you said you wouldn't even talk about it if we didn't get more staff. And since then, we've lost staff. We've lost staff in the administration office that you guys are still pushing this forward. I don't know how you think I can take this on. It's impossible. It is impossible for me to do this. And I don't know how you guys can vote yes. I really don't. Well, sorry, you, you are on the verge of getting more help. No, I'm not. Yeah, well. No, but listen, when I get help, I have to train that person to do a job in the office. I, this person will need to be trained on elections. I need to be trained on elections. Elections are a huge responsibility. And I take it very seriously to be an election judge. And I am not prepared today to do this. It's not just two extra hours to be a head judge. I need to be Debbie. I need to be Debbie, what she does in Crow Wing County. I need to be her here. I can't be calling Debbie in September, August, September, and asking her, what do I do? This isn't working. I'm going to be that person. People are going to be calling me and asking me, Char, what am I going to do? This isn't working. I have to know the ins and outs of absentee ballot voting, that new system, 
everything. I need to be trained. When am I going to do that if I'm training a new person in? I, I just can't even fathom that there is a possible vote on this tonight. I really can't. And you guys keep saying that you want to support me. And this is completely against any of that. It really is. Well, part of the problem is, I think, it, it's my understanding that this might be our last opportunity to take this on. The what next you, year it might be. Not, it what might are you guys going to do if you lose Shar? It's not your last opportunity. What are you going to do if you lose Shar? What if she walks out of here? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask a couple of questions before we keep going on here. It's pretty obvious we don't have the staff support. Am I correct on that? Okay. Number two, we don't have the staff that is trained to work with it and to get it done, get this done properly. Number three, David, I'm going to ask you, where are we taking the money from? Where are you getting this eleven, twelve thousand dollars $12,000 from? We are bleeding money out the door. Where the hell is this money coming from? And you can't sit there and shake your head, David. We have to know where it's coming from. Well, Aaron, we do have reserves in a general fund, and I can't be specific about that, but there is, we're not broke. So if no, it's a decision, we were both. if I it's a decision, it's like from. most other decisions that we make, we come up with the money, you know, so that I respect money. Don't get me wrong, but I don't think that that's a deciding factor. Staffing is a real issue and, and putting the burden on. That's a real issue. Yes. Um, I think that um, as citizens, we should take note that um, we become complacent and uh, the fact that just the uh, presidential primary, what happened to the secrecy of voting? You had to walk in, you had to declare how you were going to vote and um, get that ballot. I was, I was taken aback. I thought about, do I want to vote or should I just walk out of here? And I regret voting because I had to declare. What happened to the secrecy? Small steps are being taken and uh, we don't even realize it. And all of a sudden we're going to be there and we're not going to have uh, democratic elections anymore. We're, we don't notice it because we accept the small little steps. And all of a sudden you're there and you go, how did that happen? So I... I just, I feel like um, there's no, when you start dealing with staff, the, um, the ones that are taking care of the elections, the absentee ballots at the county, I believe they're not, staff does not have to declare whether they're, um, what party they affiliate with. And, but, we, as voters, have to come in and declare it in order to get a ballot. I think we should just look at it completely, that we don't want to lose our rights and, our, and the voting integrity that we always experienced before, the secrecy and stuff. I, I just, I was, I was on, the, on the fence, and after the presidential primary, I thought, Maybe we should start, you know, stepping up to the plate and say, uh, we're not accepting these small little things that are happening because there's going to be a lot of steps there and all of a sudden we're going to be where we don't want to be. And that's, I just, staff at the county do not have to do uh, declare party affiliation. So, and that used to be always the major thing, party balance. And um, I'm just saying we got to look at all the facts, not just the, the money. Debbie told you that the absentee board is made up of judges, not staff. But they're not, they're not. do that on Friday. I'm not, I'm not arguing with you, so. Larry, what do you got? Larry Allen, Cross Lake. Uh, whatever address you want, I got a few of them. <laughs> Um, I don't know what you're rushing into. If you want to get this done for this election or some reason, 
I mean, you're scared about the future, that's great. You don't have staff, this is a big deal. It's taking how many years to do this The uh, short-term rental? I don't know. It seems like you guys are rushing into something that you can do at any time. Uh, it's, it seems like you want to get it done this year for this election. But you're going to look at the future, look at the future and do it, you know, with staff and with machines and everything that you need. I don't know. Yeah, I get it, Larry. Yeah, it seems to me somebody's pushing the pushing the horse with the cart. Thank you. Oh yeah, yeah. John Sylvester, one two eight eight eight, County Road one hundred three, Cross Lake. Here, um, I am an election judge, and I am a ballot uh, board judge. Um, I'm willing to help. I'm, I'm willing to come in and do whatever I have to do. I told you last time I'd sleep in this office if I have to. Um, with that said, Marsha, you are totally correct. It's like taxes. Once you have a new tax, it never goes away. It just keeps building and building and building. And by the time you realize it, you've lost all your rights. And, and that's where we are getting to be, if we're not already there. Um, this is probably one of our last opportunities to do this. And I totally am in support of it. And <clears throat> I can't imagine the millions of brothers in his arms that I was in the military with that have died to protect us, to vote for us, to do this kind of stuff. I understand, Char, and I sympathize you with you that it's a lot of work. I truly do. However, we have millions of people that are dead because of fighting for, for this kind of thing. So with that, I said, thank you very much for everyone. Well, John, wait a minute before you go. Uh, so you say, Shar, I understand where you're coming from, but that is the end of the road. That's the end of the comment there. How do we physically do it here? We can't put that burden on her. That's correct. Absolutely. I totally agree. How uh, employees or um, if people can volunteer to come in to help her, however, I don't know what it is. I will do whatever it takes. I'm under her. the understanding that anybody can't walk in and do it, though. I mean, no, you've got, you've you got to, to be, be trained. You have to yeah. be this. Well, and I think you've got to be staff, I believe, or something. I mean, I, yeah. Well, and that's the, that's the deal. I mean, if it's staff, then it's staff. I'm not staff. Uh, if you want to pay me a penny a day, I don't care. I'll be staff. Well, no, no, I, it, it, that's not the point. The point is, is physically, how can we do it now if we don't have the staff to do it? And, and the, uh, all the volunteers are great, but we still need the core. We need the staff to be able to do it. So, I mean, that, I need that answer. Right. I totally understand. And I don't have that answer for you. Um, I, but I mean, I can't put somebody into that small box and say, we'll figure it out later. Sure. Sure, you know, you just, absolutely. We can't do that. That's something you folks are going to have to find out, and yeah. whatever that answer is, I'm more than willing to help you with that answer. Uh, get through whatever you need to do. Um, I'm not looking for a job, but I'll do whatever I have to do. Thank you, John. Yep. Shar, how many people can be trained on that? Only staff on the state voter registration system, and that's it. Oh, on the state. So, like, state, yeah. when you have to check a license, it's only going to be you or some other. When you guys talk about following rules or oh, Marsha, you were saying that, you know, everything's changing. You can't change the rules here compared to how they do it at the county, can you? It doesn't change how things are going to be. I can't imagine. I, I, I can't imagine that you can do it any differently than they can. No. You're, you're you can't just make up your own way to do it. Right? We're not changing we're, the rules. I don't think well, that's what we're suggesting. No, no. Robin. Hey, Robin Sylvester, 12888 County Road 103. Um, uh, Sonia had recommended, and we both have recommended the option one. There is an option on option one that has the county doing all the mailing. And Shar, I know that's not a lot, but it does take the, a little bit of burden off of you having to do any of the mailing of those absentee requests. So the second column there, again, it's immaterial. It's $800. We, we wholly support the county to do the mailing this first cycle so that we can get our feet wet and, and again, the primary, there was a uh, very uh, limited amount of people that vote absentee. So uh, again, our hope was that that workload for that first 
session of the 45 days is really a learning curve, the 30 voters. Um, and then by primary, your, your deputies hopefully trained, your deputies ready, and then have your two election judges beside you and your two ballot board members coming in as required by law to process those absentee ballots. Um, again, we weren't looking to do the machine because that's a lot more work, we felt. Um, and so we appreciate Shar, your engagement on this um, and hope that the council consider our resolution. Yeah, Aaron. I have, I have a question for you. Uh, the cost of 11,000, uh, rounding off 11,800, okay, is that per election? So we have two this year or is it one? That's the both? whole cycle. The 11,000 is both, the- Both cycle. Correct. Yep. Okay. No, I started yep. wondering when I was reading it. Yeah. And the Thank green you. highlighted on um, the thing, uh, the document is actually the volunteers that are, are either election judges now or are willing to be election judges that said, you know what, we won't take wages. We want to be involved in the process. We want to help out. Um, so, so that was the credit at the bottom of that sheet as well. So, um, I, and for personal experience going into the county to vote in the primary, I too felt the way you did, Marsha. Um, but I also had two people at the window, and they were two county employees. There weren't four people. I've never seen four people in the area when I've uh, absentee voted, uh, working with just my file. So I'm not sure where that uh, number came from. So thank you. Is, isn't there some thing about that we need to get a poll pad or some kind of special device on top of this? Or Sure. What great, exactly is that? Great question. So. Um, on that Excel spreadsheet, there's election equipment. The two big black boxes that have the tabulator blocked off for your option one, there was a $1,500 char. We don't know the cost of the assisted technology. We think it's about $1,500, um, and that's for ADA accommodations. Um, that is the technology that we would need. So we don't have that yet? Nope, we would need to purchase that. So I got an email from um, sea change this morning. It says, I will be in touch with the Secretary of State's certification team and let you know if this is even an option for us this year. It may take longer. It may take longer than a year to get you a solution. So wait, we might not even be able to get one no. of these things? No. So that's well, for a can't... rental or for a purchase? For anything. For the assistive technology? Correct. Because they have to format it to our... Okay ballots because they're not in Crow and County. Yeah. So we've had a lot of questions through this whole process. My, again, my recommendation is to have you consider the resolution and let's, let's force the hand of those that are supposed to provide us the documentation and the tools. And if we, if we can't because they can't provide tools to meet the law, then obviously the county is going to have to continue to do the work for us. But unless we make that decision, again, we've gotten contradictory information from Secretary of State's office, from the county. Everybody's learning. Everybody's sharing different information. I think until this board says we're absolutely going here, we need your assistance, the facts need to be laid out. So. But, but if they don't have a tablet and we need a tablet. Then I guess that if we can't meet, if we can't meet state guidelines, they're going to say you can't do it. If we can't minimally make that, but you all made the decision, yeah, I would like to move forward, it has to go to them to say, we can't accommodate you. So until you make that action, there is nothing that forces their hand to say, we cannot accommodate you. But isn't this decision due next week? So we would need to know by next week if we can even get a... No, what I'm saying, I'm recommending, Jackson, is that you make a recommendation here and and require them to prove to us that they can't provide it. We have to provide election services to our county, uh, our representatives, our people, sorry. Um, and the county is going to have the services. If you all say, yes, we want to move forward with this, and they can't provide us with the, the technology that they said was our minimal requirement, then, then obviously it's, it's the county that's going to have to provide it. But again... When, when look, might he get back? Yeah. And then is that the only? Well, then we're over our deadline for letting the county know. Right. Well, that's why she said, let the county know now that you want to do it, and then if it falls through in two to three weeks, then it's then, taken away. Then, yeah. I mean, that's what you're saying. Yeah, Robert. the the county would have to supersede your decision yeah. because of the tools and resources they aren't able to provide. 
that's my recommendation. I guess something I want to stay, say at this point, though, Robin, is I. There's been a lot of pressure in this building in the last six months. Absolutely. Regardless, I cannot keep putting that pressure on Char. I mean, I can't do that. Um, so if there isn't a way that is a workable way, I, I'd love to see it go through, believe me. But I, I don't want to make our situation worse by trying to push the issue. So yep, I respect however that. that is taken or, you know. Well, even if we, the uh, this tablet machine is kind of. Yeah, but that's an unknown, Jackson. So, but the county wants to know, though, by a certain date. I mean, that's why we're here where we are, because it's due next week. But that if we can't get the machine, then by default, and it's a we go point. It's rolls, a point. it rolls back yeah. to the county because we can't fulfill our obligation. Yeah. I mean, that, in that. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Patty, I haven't heard from you for a while. <laughs> you haven't? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, Patty Norgard, Bunkhouse Road, Cross Lake. And um, I'm a taxpayer in the city of Cross Lake. And Dave, you uh, mentioned you know, we always find the money. And thank goodness we have a reserve. We still have funds in the sale from Cross Lake Communications. Mm -hmm. So it is, as you said, you did not budget for this. So the other questions I have is, did you budget for the buyout of the former city administrator? Did you budget for a headhunter to replace or to get a permanent city administrator? Did you budget, as they said, probably anywhere between 11,000 and, and 50,000, which is what we heard last month, where was that money going to come from? So if you had no extra money, and I'm a taxpayer, what would I expect you to do? Um, for more, foremost, the, to have added burden on a staff that we don't have is irresponsible and maybe unchristian. And for sure, if there was one mistake made during that election process, we would be sued. Now, I don't really want to spend any more money on things that weren't budgeted for. And that would be a suit that wasn't budgeted for. So Sonia and Robin had every right to bring this issue forward. Thank goodness we still live in a democracy. But we have to make sure that we have all the facts and look at the larger picture than just doing what we think is right right now. We have elections all the time. And so I urge you to take careful consideration with my money and with your staff. Thank you. Thank you, Patty. Pam Graves, I still live on Sugarloaf Road in Cross Lake. And I want to thank you all for listening because there's not a simple solution. There isn't just one voice that's part of the democracy. I would like to say that when I first heard about this proposal, the first thing I did was I went out and looked up the state's absentee ballot manual. There is a manual that tells you how to do it. But it's not an easy one. It's over 100 pages long that you do have to follow certain steps. And that means whoever assumes that right, excuse me, um, whoever assumes that duty and the obligation for that position has to have the time to thoughtfully, the time to thoughtfully prepare for this new role that has not been assumed. And this, while it may be a great thing to do, it may not be a great thing to do this month or this summer, and that if it's so good, maybe we can take the time to be patient and plan for it for the next cycle so that we don't feel like we're jumping into something that we don't know what the implications are because Patty, I think, is correct. If we do one step wrong, somebody is not going to be happy. So I, I beg you to be respectful of 
this manual, absentee ballot manual, is formidable. I stopped at about page 23, um, and I'm an election judge, but these are additional duties after being an election judge. So thank you for, keep breathing, take a deep breath. Um, it's not gonna be done with just volunteers, because I can tell you when it comes down to the day of volunteering, you're hard pressed eight hours a day up through the Saturday before the Tuesday election. She needs to be here that full day Saturday and not doing other things. And if she's so torn between a fledgling assistant clerk who's also a treasurer who's trying to figure out where did we come up with the money for this, um, they have to be thoughtful about such an important piece of our democracy and for the city. And if it's not terribly broken and fissured, I'd say let's take the time to do it thoughtfully. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Pam. Peter Graves, 14131 Sugarloaf Road. I just wanted to clarify one point uh, with the council. Um, as previously shared with this council by Deb Erickson, Crow Wing County has the mandated obligation to manage the absentee and early voting process for the county when it's a state or a federal election. It's their mandated responsibility. The county has handled that obligation for decades through several election cycles, and the petitioners have stated that they are not questioning or challenging the accuracy of those past elections. The petitioners are requesting that Cross Lake to locally duplicate that absentee and early voting process, and it adds a cost both to the city in terms of a financial and a human resources perspective. Such a duplication does not relieve the county of its obligation, its burden, to also allow absentee and early voting um, of a, for a Cross Lake resident who elects to go vote at the county level. Such votes are not sent to Cross Lake for processing, but they are received, processed, and tabulated at Crow Wing County and added to the votes that are processed at, Crow Wing, at Cross Lake. I am informing the City Council that I intend to vote early at Crow Wing County to demonstrate my faith in the current system. I am sharing the intention with City Council so that there's no confusion or concern when the recorded votes totals for Cross Lake differ from the totals reported from this precinct. So you go forward, you're still, the citizens of Cross Lake are still allowed to vote at Crow Wing, uh, Crow Wing County. And those votes are still gonna be tabulated at Crow Wing County. You do take on this process and you are simply duplicating what's already available to people who choose to, to vote early or vote absentee. Yeah, Peter, I don't think we were going to like replace them. It was just another option for people who maybe can't get down there. That was kind of my thinking and I, I can't remember when I've struggled more with a decision or with a topic because I see both sides. I feel like, um, I, I do like the idea of having greater local control, not just of this, but of everything, of our businesses, of our short-term rentals. I, I, I like that idea, and that's partly why I got involved you know, in our local government. Um, but I also think that the timing is really poor for our staffing, and, uh, and I think you know, if we, maybe we do need to wait till next year yeah, you're, you're taking on an But extra I would like burden. to make a commitment if we do that, that we will pursue that because I do think that the local residents have a right to be able to vote here if they want to early. I, but I want to also make clear that as a citizen, I can choose to go down to Crow Wing County and totally. choose to vote down there. No one's disputing that. And here. I don't want there to be concerns about that the counts are different or right. something happened here. So this whole process of you taking on this additional burden is something that doesn't change where somebody can choose to vote and the Crow Wing County's obligation they have for right. state and local or state and federal elections. 
Aaron, where are you? Um, it, go ahead, Jerry. Drone Volts 37668 Moan Beach Trail. As far as the deal goes with where you're going to get the money from, I've been to a lot of council meetings, and you guys have given money that wasn't budgeted for. One example was one supervisor was asking for money, and they said, oh, Marshall can find it for us. And as far as being overworked, I think, if I recall, this week you guys had a um, special meeting to hire another deputy clerk. Jerry, that so, is true, Jerry, but there's going to be a process for that all to blend this, together. This here, a deputy clerk is going to be here 365 days a I year. Know, but there's going to be a process for that all to take shape. Yes, there and, is. And we've got to but acknowledge But we're hiring that. extra help. Every department wants well, extra help. We don't want to get too deeply into that debate, but eight or ten years ago, we took a staff away from that office. So we really aren't overloaded in that office. We're going back to where we were ten years ago. Yeah, but did we gain anything, any more uh, business deals that we have to go? We don't have sewer. We don't have water. We don't have electric. Well, we got, I guess we okay. do have a few We don't sore. want to get into that debate tonight. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't understand. I'd like to have more help, too, if somebody else was paying when I was in construction. I was always shorthand, but I had to pay for it, not the citizens. Thank you, Jerry. You know, I think this is a great idea, but I think we, we need to... That's very professional, too. I think we need to take a step back we need to take a step back after everything we just went through with the soldo report and trying to mend council with uh, city staff i think if we do this we totally blow up city hall i think we need to take a step back i think we're at that point now go ahead bill uh bill schultz uh 13176 albinson i haven't been to a lot of city council meetings but uh I've been to this whole one, and uh, I find it hard to s see how you could go forward with, without a cohesive plan and a team put together. I, she is your main part of the team, and she doesn't have a whole lot of confidence in that she can do it. I don't know if you can get somebody to, to do it after that, you know, or take her place for just the election. but. You guys need a, a team, and you, you need to support the people that are part of it, and they need to have the confidence that they can go forward. And I, I just don't see that happening at this point. Very well said, Bill. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. I would like to see the program start in 2025 with the budgeting process. And if, uh, if we need to hire people specifically, all those plans can be put together, what Bill talked about. I just hope we don't lose our opportunity to do it. But Well, I, I, I don't argue that, but I don't believe that one year here in the city of Cross Lake is going to prevent that. Well, what I was thinking, if I can even word it correctly, Minneapolis and St. Paul already administer their own ballots. If the state were to change some election law and take it away from individual cities, how would, you know, that would mean Ramsey and Hennepin County would have to administer all the ballots yeah. for Minneapolis, St. Paul, and all the surrounding cities. So I don't see it changing, but. I, I don't either, but I understand the concern. I, I get the concern totally and, with uh, the, the way it, things are going. Yeah. I fully understand. It's, uh, it's bizarre what's going on. But it is. I don't believe that in Cross Lake we have anything that's broken. I don't think in Crow Wing County we have anything that's broken. And I think we need to plan this out better. I think we, I believe we have the opportunity to do that. So that, there's where I sit. Okay, somebody make a motion. Make a motion that we suspend this, give it back to the county, but proceed with it in the budgeting, this coming year's budgeting process for the next year. Actually, they'll have to come back in 2025. Yes, yeah, sorry. I think that's what, Sonia, you and I talked about earlier today. 
It's not 2024 budget process, it's the 2025 one. 2025 budget process. Okay. So I'll second his motion. Okay, any other comments on it? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries all in favor. Are you doing that, Jake? Mm. Trying. All right. Okay. Thank you. Can I Sonia? just make one comment? I just want to thank everybody who spoke for or against. No hard feelings. This is our republic, and we'll all get a chance to stand up and talk. Thank you. Sonia. Thank you. Okay, Sandy, you're going to take this next one, the League of Minnesota Cities. Oh, yeah, I just wanted to bring it to the attention of any, anyone, you know, on the city staff and any of our um, council members that the League of Minnesota Cities is offering a um, conference in Rochester. Um, the, it's uh, Building a Better City is the theme of it, and uh, they have some really um, relevant um, workshops um, I wrote them down. Let's see. One is, um, where did I write it down? Well, they've got one on how to recruit um, firefighters. They've got one on um, the specifically to help support city clerks and treasurers. They've got one for um, approaching difficult topics. Um, I just think it would be valuable and, you know, based on our the assessment we had done, you know, that they suggested that some training might be helpful. So anyone on the city staff or on the council that I think they should look into it, you can, can go. We budget for this this year? Oh, God. <laughs> I think we can here find we the money. I think we can find the money. <laughs> yeah, well, we're going find the money. Yeah. Find um, money. Yeah. But if you're, you know, um, Char has the information. If, if you're interested, you know, there's a website you can go to and look at all of the, um, all the options that are available. I mean, there are all these trainings that are offered. I think, you know, it, it might behoove people to take advantage of them if they... I think you, Sandy. The League of Minnesota Cities conferences are excellent. Yep. Uh, yeah, I, I think so, too. So... I'll go to one in Mazatlan I know you in won't, yeah. February. <laughs> the Rochester's <laughs> too far. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see where there was one, and there's a lot about um, making your city sustainable, and I mean, just some really valuable um, topics. And I don't even know that you you have to be a member of a city staff. I think yeah. people can access them. Anyway, just well, wanted to throw that out there, let, you know, inform people that this is an option available to you. The our, city city council and staff would go to right. to that, uh, and uh, and the networking. Is immense too. I met. I went last yes. year and it was amazing. I met a lot of really, really interesting, helpful people. So, that's that's my bit. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Cool. Month end revenue is next. Who's going to take this one? Jerry. This information. That is correct. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Um, okay, Jerry, I'm going to turn it over to you. Um, in your packet is a actual, <coughs> is a proposed schedule of events or uh, a timetable for the hiring of a new city administrator. Um, <coughs> tentatively scheduling something to or to have somebody on board around the first of uh, July. Um, where I would ask that if you have some concerns with any of these dates or you've got some conflicts, that we can adjust them a little bit to um, accommodate most folks as I, much as we can. Uh, I might have to zoom in at, at some point in one of these, but can we talk later about that, Jerry? Sure. Okay. Um, I, well, this is not a cast in stone type thing. We, we do have some leeway. Um, even end date and midpoint. Uh, for your information, I did talk to Mike this morning, and I do talk, try to talk to him a couple times a week about the process and how it's going. He has received approximately 50 resumes at this point. Holy buckets. 
Uh, we don't know, you know, we don't know if they all qualify as being uh, viable candidates, but uh, that shows that there's some interest in, yeah. in Cross Lake. Um, so that's a positive. I, is he still looking for more, or has he closed that now? And we are still at. We are still advertising. Probably going to advertise till uh, the twentieth around that that area. Okay. Um, but he's sifting through them. I'm sure. He has not shifted through them yet. I'm just. 50. I'm bringing you up to date that they. Yeah. That's what's there. He hasn't tried to narrow it down at all until he's closing it up. Um, but. I think it's very positive that he does have that. Yeah. I can also tell you that I have fielded some calls from folks that are in the uh, profession that are trying to gauge some interest as far as what they have. Um, again, I think the, the process so far is positive. Awesome. Yep. Good. Thanks. It's just the early June that's kind of a, that first week in June is if you want to tell Mike or I can talk to him. <clears throat> okay. Um, Jake, can you maybe bring Char back out because... Oh, okay. I kind of wanted her input on this next issue, but... Can I can I ask you folks to possibly take a five minutes? In recess? Yeah. Sure. Does it need to be? Okay. Yeah. I'm We're going to take a five minute recess.